why are we comparing Python and Go? Because Go destroys Python on every front, including machine learning these days. Um, and I'm not the one saying that. I can go show you the blogs that are saying that from people who do machine learning every day, all day. Uh, same with cybersecurity. Cybersecurity, Go is destroying Python on the cybersecurity front uh, because it's a better tool for the job. End of story. Um, you can write code and cross compile it for every target operating system uh, and have packages and payloads that can't be decompiled by the end result, by the end user. Can't do that with Python at all. As much effort into trying to keep the language consistent. Uh, yeah, if it, it, unless until they don't. How many times has the Python language design team violated their own mantras from import me? <laughs> I mean, I can't even, I, I forgot counting. I can't even count them so far. I mean, they, 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 they talk a good game and then they do another thing. How many, how many people have seen nested com comprehensions? You know, I mean, look, I'm not going to slam on Python. People love it. I loved it for a long, long time, but it's like a bad girlfriend that did me wrong. I don't want to go there again. Um, and I have a lot of people that I really care about and love who use it all the time. And I just can't anymore. I can't go back. Go is so much better for anything that I would ever use for Python. Uh, there's a few areas that Python really, really shines to me. So Python, um, Python has phenomenally great, um, um, Python has, has really great, uh, obviously it has great built-in data structures. Uh, and I, I love that ability to do that. It makes math really easy. Uh, it has really great ability to stub C code, which is why it's so popular. That's why TensorFlow blew up. It's why NumPy blew up. It's why, you know, math and all that stuff blew up. Uh, but um, uh, remove, reduce, and kept, kept map instead of maybe sad. Are you talking about Go or, or Rust or JavaScript? <laughs> so the same consistent Python that I need two versions installed. Oh, the Python 2, 3 thing. Yeah, I can't even talk. That the Python two three thing becomes irrelevant in a modern language, and by modern language I mean modern languages are now compiled. LLVM has totally changed the game. Interpreted languages are dead, except for Bash and little stuff you're going to do here and there. It's kind of fun to watch the pendulum swing back. I I love watching it. So the you know when it used to be all about the C right, and then. It web the web was invented and nobody could nobody wanted to code back in CGI web code in C. So what do we do? And then we started writing shell code and everybody got hacked because shell's really horrible for that. In fact, uh, the example in um, the Linux command line is in shell. It's a CGI script. And then Python came on this and like, oh God, thank you. And the whole world went ballistic for Python and PHP. And so we put that everywhere. And all of a sudden interpreter languages were king. Uh, JavaScript was being used all over the place. Uh, it was interpreted, interpreted, interpreted. That was when all the extra shells came out. Z shell, TC shell, fish, everything. It's all about interpreted. Uh, it was all about interpreted, interpreted, interpreted. And and then what? And then so and then Ruby came out, and we had Ruby was pretty much the climax of the interpreted insanity. And I loved it. I was there with them. I was writing I wrote the I and I library for for Ruby. I was right there along with them. I'm not saying that I wasn't a part of it. It's yeah. It's kind of like the centralization versus decentralization. And then all of a sudden, what? And then, and then all of a sudden, and, and then it got really nuts. So Node came out, right? Ryan Dahl kind of grabbed Node with as much thought as Notch made Minecraft. <laughs> and he threw it out there. And now the whole world's using Node, which he doesn't use anymore, by the way. He just released Dino. And I did. It was a long time ago. And so then he, 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 um, so yeah, he, he stumbled on, what, what if we put V8, you know, in college, you know, he's experimenting. And so, and then, so, so no, but it wasn't even node. It wasn't even node that was the, that was the climax of the interpreter insanity. It was coffee script, coffee script, which you can almost track. I, I kid you not. If you look, if you look at the wave, all right, if you look at the wave, coffee script was when good people started making blog posts that said, you know, I appreciate the developers are doing this and everything, and in their snowflake kind of snowflake kind of way, they said, "But you know, I just think we should use JavaScript right there. I think we're kind of pushing the boundaries of having an interpreter for an interpreter for an interpreter." I mean, I kid you not, that's what it was—an interpreter for an interpreter for an interpreter. I mean, the interpreter insanity kind of culminated in CoffeeScript, and and then what happened? So why do so why do you, why do you do this outside of my of my working hours? Why? Why do I do this? 
Oh. Uh, I maintain a legacy copy. <laughs> I didn't know that, but I'm sure you did. I did not know that. I wasn't it. This is not a personal attack. So, so, so you know what I'm saying? And then what? Then Go comes along and I want to, I don't know this for sure. Go was the first, somebody said, okay, it's time for strict typing again. We need strict typing. We, this interpreter insanity has gone crazy. We're not going to call it that, but we're going to move on. This is interpreted. It won't die. It's true too. Uh, and so we need some strict typing. And even I posted in my, I posted it in my thing. Guido van Rosen said, "I have learned through sad experience." This is exact quote. I have learned through sad experience that for larger projects, strict typing is a requirement. This is exact words. I have the quote in my Discord. You can go look at it. Um, and and he's actually showing how they're bringing TypeScript um, into Python because the untyped languages are the worst. And, and so, you know, but you got to understand, we had Java. That's what pushed us into the interpreted insanity. Java was so overly strictly typed and so monstrously bad and so draconianly class-based blueprints and so anti-object-oriented programming. And it confused the fuck out of everybody. And then what? So everybody's like, oh, please, just give me an interpreted language. Any interpreted language, I don't care. And then we went crazy with the interpreted languages. And now we're coming back. Now we're coming back. So the whole world is like, <laughs> we're like, okay, it's time for me to think about my types. And, and you know, there's another couple of disasters. Unity, for example. What happened to Unity Script? Did you guys see that one? That was fun. Unity Script lived for maybe, what, three months? <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, another one. So go to uh, Godot, Godot or Godot, depends on how you say it, right? They had sort of a unit. They had Unity scripts. You don't even know it existed. Unity 